We're still waiting for the stable Android 12 release, but that hasn't stopped us looking forward as over the past few weeks it has become clear that Google is developing a mid-year follow-up to the as yet unreleased OS. There's a lot to unpack, but here's everything we know is coming and what we've dubbed Android 12.1 from improvements to foldables, fixes for a variety of issues, dynamic color availability, and much, much more. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Earlier this month, it was discovered that Google was planning on a release between this fall's Android 12 and next fall's Android 13. One that is significant enough to increase the API level that developers use to determine your Android version. This sort of mid-cycle bump used to happen more frequently, with Google most recently releasing Android 8.1 Oreo back in 2017. While this particular mid-cycle hasn't been given an official name, we've dubbed it Android 12.1, following the usual pattern of Google releasing a 0.01 update. Typically, these updates to Android have come within six months of a major release, and with Android 12 likely to release in early October, we could be looking at a potential late winter or early spring release for Android 12.1. In some cases, the Android 0.1 updates have been in support of recently released Pixel and Nexus devices. For example, the original Pixel launched with Android 7.1 Nougat out of the box. So with that in mind, the odds are good that Pixel devices will be the first to be updated with Android 12.1. Conversely, it's also possible that some Android OEMs may not even bother upgrading to Android 12.1 at all, skipping straight to Android 13 when that's available later next year. Thus far, there hasn't really been much public information about this supposed Android 12.1 release, with only a few hints being offered between Android and Chromium code. A source familiar with the development of Android has shared with us some of the internal details of Android 12.1, and we must admit there is quite a lot to unpack here. The largest chunk of this update or the changes with this update will have to do with foldable devices, a form factor that Android has officially supported for a few years now. One suspicion for why foldables may be a focus for Google this year is the long rumored possibility of the company releasing a foldable Pixel phone, a possibility that was furthered by Android 12 itself. The most meaningful change coming to foldables though, and presumably tablets as well with Android 12.1 is the addition of a taskbar if you've used a desktop or laptop in the last decade, you probably have a decent idea of what to expect here. Android's taskbar will show you recent apps, as well as any app shortcuts or folders of apps you've pinned to this hot seat of your home screen. Of course, when you're not using it, the taskbar can be safely stashed away with a long press and revealed again later for quick access. The clearest picture we have of how Android 12.1's taskbar will work comes from an educational mock-up of the feature, though the image Google included was later replaced with a placeholder image. In the image that we have, we see a simple bar reminiscent of Chrome OS's dock, and the mock-up shows a foldable that resembles a Surface Duo, albeit with a single folding display. In a sense, the taskbar will serve as a combination of Android's recent menu, as well as the hot seat for all of your launcher apps. While this may sound like a feature that would only work with the default launcher of your phone, it seems Google has taken special care to ensure that taskbar will still function with a third-party launcher, for instance. It seems that you'll be able to quickly enter split screen or change apps, which or which apps you're looking at, with a drag and drop gesture from this taskbar too, which will be very useful for multitasking. On that note, Google is also including a new take on split screen with Android 12.1. Previously, we had reported that Google was working on the idea of app pairs, which would let you run or run two apps quickly combined into one task in the overview menu. Work is still ongoing for app pairs and we could see it launch with Android 12.12. Beyond that though, we find that there is another split screen overhaul in progress, which will work hand in hand with app pairs. And this, will, this new system will divide your screen into separate windows, internally referred to as a main stage and a side stage. Just like split screen Android today, you'll be able to use a slider to adjust how large either stage is. And just like the app pair system, you'll be able to double tap the slider to have two apps switch sides of your screen. One wild new feature of this new split screen system, developed with the help of Samsung though, is the ability to long press a notification and drag it into a window. This gives you more control over where and how that app opens, rather than simply tapping the notification and having it take over your whole screen. The new split screen will also be manageable by app developers, enabling new experiences for Android apps. For example, Chrome on the Galaxy Z Fold today can open a link into a separate window, allowing for better multitasking. This same functionality will be available for all devices and app developers, 
with this Android 12.1 update. Just as your attention can be better split between two apps, so too may be the Android 12.1 notification shade split in half itself. On wider devices like foldables and tablets, the usual panel found by pulling down from the top of your screen will be divided into two sections, one half for your quick settings tiles and the other half for notifications. If you don't have any notifications, one half of the shade will simply feature a large clock. On the other side, the initial condensed view of the quick settings panel will be slightly more helpful on foldable devices with Google adding things like a brightness slider for easy access. As a continuation of Android 12.1 split screen and activity management tweaks, the settings app is also getting a redesign for wide devices like foldables and tablets. Under the new design, settings will be broken out into two panes on the left side, presumably showing the high level sections and on the right side showing individual settings pages. Along with all of those more major updates, there's also a suite of less notable but still much needed improvements for foldable handsets for instance, the launcher, status bar, and taskbar will all have special animations that play when you unfold your device. These animations will be driven by your device's hinge position, meaning the faster or slower you unfold, or the faster the or slower the animation will play. It's a little small tweak, but one that should make foldables just a little bit more delightful to use in daily usage. And while Google has been putting a heavy emphasis on building apps for screens of all sizes, including tablets, Chromebooks, and foldables, there are always ways or going to be ways for apps to simply never update to accommodate other sizes. Normally those apps are opened in letterbox or a letterbox view on foldables, meaning that there are black or transparent bars on either side of the app itself. In Android 12.1, the letterbox effect will be tweaked to put the app on either the right or left side of the screen rather than directly in the center. This should help make those apps easier to use with a single hand. And there should also be a way to switch which side of the screen the app is showing on to so that you can tune the access to, to suit your particular hand usage. One of the things that stands out the most about Android 12.1 is that it will actually change the API level of Android, meaning there will be changes that affect app developers wholesale. We've already mentioned that there will be an API available for developers to open a second window for the app. But another API change we've spotted is a new way for developers to know ahead of time what window sizes are possible on a particular device. Previously, this sort of information would only be known for the current state of the device, meaning that if the phone was folded, the app couldn't know what sizes are possible when unfolded. You're probably wondering though what else will change with Android 12.1 or what changes will come. And while Android 12.1 does seem to have a focus on foldables, Google also appears to be taking the release as an opportunity to continue to improve on the additions brought in Android 12 itself. That said, since most of these changes won't require a change to the Android API, some of the improvements may not need to wait until Android 12.1, that is. According to our sources, some may arrive earlier as part of a quarterly update to Android 12, and we'll try to note that possibility where relevant. As you'd expect, these same changes will also be present in Android 12.12, should that be available for your device. So with Android 12, we already know that Google Pixel phones have gained the ability to retheme almost the entire phone UI, as well as various Google apps, in a system called Dynamic Colors and has been seen with Samsung's recent One UI 4.0 beta, the same capability is not coming for all phones with the full Android 12 release. According to our own sources, the dynamic color system, internally referred to as Monet, isn't becoming a part of the Android open source project until Android 12.1. This means that OEMs and ROM developers may not actually be able to take advantage of the feature until then, and it would explain why One UI 4.0 didn't include dynamic colors in the most recent update. And over the years, not much has changed to the boot animation for Pixel phones. With Android 10, Google did add a dark mode for the animation, ultimately making it the default instead of the blinding white that was before. More recently though, Google has added a progress percentage indicator for updates, letting you observe the progress of an update installing on your device. With a quarterly update to Android 12, Google is working to bring dynamic colors to the boot animation. And while we weren't able to preview this new animation, it seems it will gradually introduce your currently preferred color to the normal boot up logo. There are some assistant tweaks as well, and following the pattern of Samsung Galaxy phones, among many others, for instance, Android 12 has introduced a new way to access the Google Assistant by long pressing the power button. If enabled, the usual power menu is only accessible via the quick settings toggle. And with a quarterly update to Android 12, you'll actually be able to tweak how long you need to press the power button to invoke the assistant. The option will range from 250 milliseconds all the way up to 750 milliseconds, with 500 milliseconds being set as a default to activate the voice AI. Another headline and long overdue feature in Android 12 is the addition of scrolling screenshots, which automatically capture an entire page by scrolling through it vertically. 
However, there are a few cases where these scrolling screenshots just simply don't work, including in Chrome in your web browser, apps built with Flutter and apps like Gmail that use a web view. With Android 12.1, Google is including a formal fix for web-based view apps to support scrolling screenshots with no work on the developer's part, which should make it much better and much more cohesive with the rest of the system. Audio is another focus in Android 12.1 and Google is working on APIs for having audio be spatialized, an effect that typically makes music or other stereo sound kind of sound as though it's in surround sound mode. And the best recent example of this effect is the addition of Dolby Atmos to Apple Music, the music streaming service. It'll be possible with this recent update for developers to mark certain audio as not being fit for being put through this spatializer. And this points to the effect perhaps being applied system wide rather than on a per app basis. It's not clear if this is simply an enhancement for Android or if Google has plans for such an effect to be available for Pixel phones in the future. Android 12.1 will introduce a number of fixes and tweaks as well, and it will also include some new animations for the newer styles of fingerprint sensors that are becoming natively supported. For under display fingerprints, there's a dwell animation to indicate that you need to keep your finger down for a bit longer for your finger itself to be red. Meanwhile, there's a new pulsing animation to indicate the location of side mounted fingerprint sensors that are more common on affordable Androids. On top of that, on recent Pixel phones that put their proximity sensor under the display, when it's in use, you'll see a an quite annoying blinking dot at the top of the screen. With Android 12.1, Google has changed the way automatic brightness works and no longer needing to check the proximity sensor itself. This should cut down on the amount of times that you see that annoying blinking dot on Pixel phones, which we're sure many of you out there will be happy to hear. So in a nutshell, that's everything we currently know about Android 12.1, which as it turns out is a fair amount, even at this stage. We simply don't know though, which devices will be first in line to get updated, especially as Android 12 isn't even here officially yet. But we'd love to know what you think of these features or upcoming features, or even these proposed features. What are you excited by and what would you like to sink your teeth into? Or are you just sat there left scratching your head wondering why we even care about this? Let us know down in the comments section below. Until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I'll speak to you later.